We're in the midst of second quarter earnings and telcos are next in line to release their numbers. Migs Lopez, investment manager at AB Capital Investments, is here to give us his take on the telco space as well as other beleaguered industries under the new president. Hello, Migs. Good morning. Oh, now, good morning, Jean. Um, the telcos not exactly in an ideal spot given their battle with the PCC in court, but yes. as we expect their earnings report to come out, this I just wanted to show you this sure. chart. This is very interesting for me, looking at the net income outlook for these two companies. Sure. Now, if you see here, um, okay, this is top. I think we have another table there looking at okay. their net income. We're in, we see PLDT's net income, that mm -hmm. is the one in yellow, kind of decrasing, while mm -hmm. Globe's net income, including the expected income, estimated income for 2017, 20 to 2017, on the rise, although gradually. What's your take on this? Fierce competition. Basically, it's, it depends uh, mainly on its uh, service reliability and how it markets its strategy. We've seen them, uh, we've seen both Globe and Smart really target the retail in terms of its uh, 50 peso uh, data plans with Globe, well, with Globe having its unlimited text to all networks. How, however, with Smart, you have your one gigabyte plan, but then again, you also have your 300 megabyte for your streaming services. So different, well, same service, but different, different targets and different markets. Which one do you expect to impress once they release their earnings? I'm currently looking at PLDT right now. They've improved their earnings uh, from, uh, 28, from 28 billion to 30 billion, and then this is due to the gains from the sale on sale of uh, Beacon, uh, well, technically selling, selling Meralco. That being said, one of the things we're looking at still is uh, with the Vega Telecom sale, uh, whether it would affect, well, highly likely it will affect their depreciation by getting all those assets, same with Globe. But then again, you're going to look at a short term to medium term, a bit of bearish tone. Still for PLDT. Still for PLDT. Now, looking at their stock prices now, right. it's been on a roller coaster ride, right. these two stocks. Sure, sure. Uh, and we see a lot of volatility. So, my question mm -hmm. is moving forward, how do you expect this volatility to continue, considering mm -hmm. that, you know, we still have that case pending? Um, other than that, no, we we're going to expect a bit of a bellwether movement with these two along with the index. No, we're seeing first off that the index is currently trading at around 24 times PE. That's number one. Number two, it might test the resistance of 8150. Well, that's our target. Uh, that's our target level for the index. And number three, well, tomorrow's ghost month, so we will expect a bit of you know profit taking from our for all our investors trying to cash in for August. All right. So you're seeing that the challenges that will be or the pressure affecting this particular stock price will be similar to the ones affecting the main index. Yes, ma'am. Now looking at that, as mm -hmm. we entered officially enter the ghost month, how yes. have you prepared your portfolios for that? Okay, it depends. First off, uh, historically, the index would fall down, I think, around 1.5% to 2%. So this would be an opportune time for those in cash, for those who are not yet in the market, to enter the market. For those who are in the market already, it's a good time to take gains, you know, to take profit from those gains, and now to rebalance and to look for, in terms of stock selection, those value stocks that still have potential for a run-up. Okay, when talking about value stocks which still have, which has potential, what are the stocks you're looking at? Mainly, we're still looking at consumer. Uh, two names that I am currently looking at is first off, Pure Gold, Pure Gold Price Club, and then Mrs. G, you know, although Mrs. G were part of the Vixal Group. That being said, if you're going to look at Pure Gold, it has run up to, at least to the price of 47 to 48 pesos per share, breaking out from a price of 44 pesos per share. If you're going to look now at, uh, at Mrs. G or Metro Retail Sales Sorry, just over so Pure sure. Gold, so is that still value for money? We're going to look at it from a perspective that they might have, the mystery here is with the earnings. Is the market already pricing in something? Or is there still a potential for a breakout? That being said, we still have a target of around 51. The earn, well, our potential for, in, for an upside is already compressed. But then again, any, any, any income projection, or any good income, uh, 2Q or one half income, would be a good side for us. A good boost for that. Yes, All right, how about Metro Retail? Metro Retail as well, no? it's, it has the same story. Uh, it was a laggard for most of the first quarter of 2016. I think we have that stock price sure. here. If okay, can we look at it right mm -hmm. now? It was a laggard, no? trading at around 3.5 to 4 pesos. But then again, if you're going to look, there was a, there was a boost. From four pesos to four. You see that steep um, in incline there. Yeah, there, there's a steep, there's, there's a steep incline, no? From from at least three pesos, it's now boosted to 5.6 to 5.7. That being said, is there something with the earnings? Are we are we are we supposed to expect something that's gonna boost their earnings? So that's no. one thing we're gonna have to watch out for as well. Thank you so much, Biggs, sure. for your guidance.